How do you use interior angles to find unknown angle measures? For example, what is the measure of angle X? In this lesson, you will learn to solve for unknown angle measures by using consecutive interior angles. Let's review. We know supplementary angles are two angles whose sum is 180 degrees. So here we have two angles, one measures 150 degrees and one measures 30 degrees, and we know they are supplementary because 150 degrees plus 30 degrees equals 180 degrees. Let's take a look at a common mistake. Consecutive interior angles are on the same side of the line. So a student may incorrectly think that we have consecutive interior angles in the angles X and Y because they're interior, but we see they're not on the same side of the intersecting line, so we cannot call them consecutive interior angles. In order for them to be consecutive interior angles, we would have to have our diagram corrected so that we still have our three lines, two are parallel, intersected by a third, but now angle X and angle Y are on the same side of the line, so we can say that they are consecutive interior angles. Let's take a look at consecutive interior angles by first looking at intersecting lines. Here we have two lines intersect, and we can go ahead and say that one angle is called angle X. Let's take a look at how these intersecting lines can help us find consecutive interior angles. A pair of intersecting lines creates two pairs of equal vertical angles and four pairs of supplementary angles. So in addition to angle X, we can have angle Y, angle Z, and angle W. And we can say angles W and Y are vertical and angles X and Z are also vertical because they are across from each other. And the supplementary angle pairs are angles W and X, angles X and Y, angles Y and Z, and angles Z and W. And notice that the supplementary angles are all angles that are next to each other. A street intersects first and second streets. A street needs to be repaved. In order to complete the project, the town needs to know the angle measure for the intersection marked X. If they know that one intersection is 100 degrees, what is the measure of the intersection marked X? Well, let's take a look at our intersection. We have two streets intersected by a third street. In this case, first and second streets are parallel to each other, and they are intersected by A Street. We know that the intersection of 2nd Street and 8th Street creates a 100 degree angle, and we want to find the measure of angle X. Well, in order to do that, we need to use consecutive interior angles. If we take a look at our diagram again, we see we've got two parallel lines intersected by a third line, in this case 1st Street, 2nd Street, and 8th Street. And we know one angle measure is 100 degrees, and we're trying to find the measure of angle X. Well, a pair of parallel lines being crossed by a third line creates interior angles. Notice that our interior angles are going to be between the two lines. So in this case, X and the angle marked 100 degrees are considered to be interior angles. Interior angles on the same side of the line are called consecutive interior angles, and they add to 180 degrees. Notice that our angle marked X and our angle marked 100 degrees are both on the same side of the line, in this case A Street, and they are both interior angles. This tells us that they add to 180 degrees. Since we know that they add to 180 degrees, we can set up the equation 100 degrees plus X equals 180 degrees, and subtract 100 degrees from both sides to get that X equals 80 degrees. So we know the measure of angle X is 80 degrees because we used consecutive interior angles. In this lesson, you have learned to solve for unknown angles by using consecutive interior angles.